So I'm really excited that Dr. Terry Tomlinson is with us this evening. We, as Terry and I have been getting to know each other, we've decided that we had a lot of similarities when we were growing up. Um, one of the things that I had, and Terry had as well, is we had a lot of allergies when we were growing up. When I was in the third grade, I was definitely allergic to lilacs. And I didn't like my third grade teacher. So when I got on the bus in the morning, I prayed that somebody had lilacs on the bus so I could go home from school. <laughs> <laughs> but if any of you have had allergies, you've grown up with different things, ear infections, tonsillitis, all those things that we had as kids. And what were we given? Penicillin and antibiotics. And we didn't know what that was doing to our gut at the time. Um, and Terry's journey has, is just amazing. And she took uh, her health into her own hands and she's been studying natural medicine for 40 years. And she just has an amazing, amazing story and you're really going to enjoy listening to Terry tonight. Terry? certified naturopathic doctor. I have a master's in herbology. Uh, I'm a certified natural health professional. I really, really study natural health every day for the past 40 years. Why? Because as she said, I was very, very ill as a child. Um, my mom was a penicillin queen, uh, so much so that I would even sometimes pin myself in my sheet when the doctor came to our house so that uh, he couldn't reach me with the uh, penicillin and he put it right through the sheet. <laughs> so that didn't work. Um, what happened through the years was I continued to get sicker. I developed um, ear infections, bronchitis, every itis out there, itis being inflammation. I literally had a hole in my eardrum, couldn't get my ears wet. It's really how I grew up and it just seemed all the way it was. Tons of medicine. They said I'd get worse as I got older, I did. I developed asthma more medicine, more tests. Uh, I still didn't get better. I developed a heart problem in and out of emergency rooms. My lips would be purple, my side would be numb, I'd be scared to death that this was it, uh, and it wasn't. And uh, so I had a disruption in my life. My father died suddenly at the age of 53 of a massive heart attack. Uh, my mother followed five years later um, uh, lung cancer. And um, she was only 57. And so for me, it was a wake up call. I mean, I was literally doing everything my parents were doing, eating the same kind of food. I had a whole team of doctors from cardiologists, internists, um, orthopedic, on and on and on. But I never got better. And so I sought out an herbalist. That herbalist had me taking 19 different herbs, two, three capsules, three times a day. And I would make a bowl, in fact, I did the math recently, it was 60 capsules, four bottles of water. My husband thought I'd lost my ever-loving mind. And I would put these herbs in my body and little by little, I started to see a light at the end of the tunnel. And, but it didn't seem logical to me that a person would have to do that, okay? So that's how I started studying. And um, that kind of brings us up through the years. Uh, my life has changed completely. I have no pain in my body, I'm, I'm just literally never sick. I have a huge immune system. Doesn't mean that I wouldn't get sick or think that I wouldn't. Uh, but mm -hmm. I really got deep into God's pharmacy and the way that I eat, my lifestyle, and I changed everything. And consequently, it's just been an amazing journey. Now, one thing I didn't mention is I've had four major accidents. I had a head-on collision with a car eight times. Chipped my neck bone, injured my sciatica. My orthopedic doctor told me I would lay in traction three or four times a year for the rest of my life, and I did for 10 years. It just seemed like, you know, I'd get that little pain started, I'd call for a muscle relaxer, I'd lay in traction, it would get better, and that was it. Until I rolled backwards off a horse onto my head and broke my upper back. And so in that accident, I was in a back brace for three months before one of my uh, employees tricked me into going to a massage therapist that she thought was super wonderful. And as it turns out, he was. Uh, at the end of the session, he went straight down my spine. I had zero 
throat pain. He taught me something I didn't know about muscle memory. I never put the brace back on. I never went back to the doctor. I went to him three days a week. I was water skiing uh, within three months. I live here in Florida, of course. Uh, and everything was great after that until I crossed the road to get my son from school and a car ran over me. Super painful. Uh, I ended up with nerve damage in my wrist, bulging discs in my neck, some surgery on my head. We're not sure that that really helped, but I did have it. <laughs> and, uh, and that was great until about four years ago when I got back on a horse. Now, the reason I got back on the horse, because I have a daughter that's an amazing equestrian. She has 19 horses, she imports them from Spain, she wins gold to everything, she just won some blah, blah, blah this weekend. And I assume that child came from my womb that I certainly can ride horses too. But what I've learned is after four minutes, and body slamming to the ground, five fractures in my lower back this time, uh, S1, S2, S3, S4, serious fracture, uh, and S5, a serious fracture in the center of my sacrum, to the point they thought I had internal bleeding. I was able to mitigate that pain in six days, not fix the fractures, but mitigate the pain, which was excruciating, and walk out of there, and that doctor still calls me to talk to patients that just want to continue to have medications to, to cover up, you know, the pain. So that's why I'm here. I'm gonna kind of do a different little talk on inflammation because I know that everybody out there has a good handle on inflammation on the one side of the coin. So I took this uh, title from a Time Magazine article that I put down there called The Secret Killer, The Surprising Link Between Inflammation and Heart Attack, Cancer, Alzheimer, and Other Major Diseases, okay? And one of the things I've learned through the years is that the inflammatory response, I like to explain it simply to people, is when you cut your finger as an example, your brain gets a signal that there's damage. Your, your brain signals the tiny blood vessels that release plasma that go to the area to eat up the damaged tissue. This is the inflammatory response. This is the first line of defense in the body. This is what it's supposed to do, okay? Then it should subside and the immune system should take over. If the body's immune system isn't strong enough for the completion of the healing, brain keeps getting a signal body fills with inflammation, and the rest is what we're going to talk about here. Okay, everybody? So we're going to get started. Before we get started, I have to do the proper disclosures. I have to let you know that our goal in this uh, health seminar is to share how to apply natural lifestyle approaches. I need to have this on the other side. No, just one second. Is that better? Can y'all hear me? No? Yes? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, apply natural lifestyle approaches that can act to facilitate the body's healing and health building potential. Okay. We, we don't undertake as a naturopathic doctor to diagnose or treat any kind of disease, but recognize that the majority of health conditions are cumulative effect. We believe that the underlying cause of disease as an improper diet, unhealthy habits, and environmental factors that can cause biological imbalances leading to a weakening of the body's defenses and subsequent breakdown of our health, okay? So that's to let you know what we're gonna be talking about today. You sit down, bring forward. And you can... We have it going on. Right there. Yeah, there. there we go, okay. Okay, the fire's within. So inflammation is the body's first line of defense, like I was describing to y'all. But when it goes awry, it can lead to heart attacks, colon cancer, Alzheimer, and a host of other diseases. And I can't tell you guys how solid I am in that remark. I mean solid. I know that I know after all the years and my experiences and where I am today at 73 years of age, running the Dizzy Half Marathon, doing 40 jumping jacks off the ground, with the history I just described to you, I know that inflammation is our issue. Oh, here we go again. Guys, work with me. I haven't seen help. Okay, inflammation, when we're young, 
Our bodies are producing antioxidants to combat the effects of free radical damage, but as we age, our antioxidant production slows down. In fact, after the age of 20, we're on the downhill slide. They have discovered that there are literally enzymes that have gone dormant in our body starting at the age of 20. One of them, raise your hand if you've heard of this one, SOD or superoxide dismutase. Nobody, oh you have Fran, okay. Well superoxide dismutase is gone by the time we're 20. They didn't even know it was part of our genome back in the day, all right? So it slows down while our oxidative stress is increasing. Oxidative stress is the aging process body has a whole lot more stress um, with relationships, with our lifestyle ch choices, uh, with all the bombardment that we get, uh, even the 5G they're bringing in to guarantee to fry our brains. <laughs> um, eventually, we really become out of balance. And, you know, we start to notice it in our late 30s. We notice it more in our 40s. And if you looked at a timeline, by the time we're 60, many people are taking multiple medications. Medication for blood pressure, med medication for, al um, not Alzheimer, for um, statins, um, thyroid medicine, and then medicines to combat the side effects of those medicines. And I'm here to tell you that I firmly believe in God's pharmacy and that we can manage and heal our own bodies using our own body's uh, defenses, if we understood how to do it. Okay, heart disease. Cholesterol molecules will slip into the lining of the coronary arteries and are engulfed by cells called macrophages. Eventually, a plaque forms. The stronger the inflammatory reaction, the more likely that plaque will burst, causing a heart attack or a stroke. Now, who would think that the inflammation is the ultimate situation that's creating a heart attack? And when we think of many things, we've all been taught about cholesterol. Cholesterol is interesting and important, but it's not the end all because that's building the plaque, but meanwhile, this is what's going on when we have a heart attack. Alzheimer, okay? The glial cells in the brain are supposed to support the neuron, but in an attempt to make things normal again when they get out of balance, um, they release too many of the cytokines, which are the immune molecules, that can trigger a greater um, setback, a greater destruction of the brain. Again, we're back to inflammation. So what about cancer, the wound that never heals? In 1860, a renowned pathologist, Rudolf Virchow, speculated that cancerous tumors arise at the site of chronic inflammation, okay? Research now supports that mutation and inflammation are mutually reinforcing processes that left unchecked can transform normal cells into potentially dead tumors, okay? Diabetes, understanding the mechanisms linking inflammation to diabetes and related complications has stimulated interest in targeting inflammatory pathways as part of the strategy to prevent or control diabetes and its complications. See, there's a complex interplay between inflammation, insulin, and fat, either in our diet or in large folds under our skin. And actually, the fat will release cytokines as well and create additional inflammation in the body. And we look at when the body attacks itself. That's chronic inflammation that uh, results in rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, lupus, and other autoimmune uh, dis disorders. For decades, they show the clearest example of a body that's at war with itself. <clears throat> but that internal destruction didn't come from an excess of cholesterol deposits or bacterial infections. Instead, it comes from the body's own immune defenses mistakenly directing the inflammatory response directly at the healthy cell, being joints, nerves, and connective tissues. Does everybody find this fascinating? I could listen to this stuff all day long. Okay, so what can we do about inflammation? I mean, that's why we're all here today, to find out what, what the scoop is. Okay, 
There are things we can all do to dampen the inflammatory fires. Some of the advice may sound um, terribly familiar, but now we have fresh reasons to follow through. Now we understand that so much of the dis-ease in our body is directly related to the inflammatory response. Okay, that's critical to understand because again, by the time I got to my last major accident, I had learned how to mitigate the inflammatory response and therefore was able to walk out. When I tell you I walked out in six days, I didn't just walk out, had a little slight setback conversation with my husband because my son had just moved into a new home. Uh, we lived in Orlando, it was in Mount Dora and I wanted to see the house and I just got out of the hospital I'm like, Terry, there's no furniture if you need to lay down, whatever he was saying to me that I wasn't listening. So when he dropped me off at the house, I went ahead and got my own car, <laughs> drove to Mount Dora. <laughs> and I was able to walk up and down a, a full length staircase, no landing, uh, then call my sister and meet her in Mount Dora for lunch and then drive myself home. That's how much I was able to mediate that pain. Okay, naturally. I love this quote. I put this quote in every single thing I do because if someone wishes for good health, you must first ask oneself if he's ready to do away with the reasons for his illness because only then is it possible to help them. Guys, I talk to thousands of people actually around the world on a daily basis. I talk to so many people and I give them really good advice but it doesn't matter what I believe or what I say, it matters what you believe and what you're gonna do. And when we're talking about the things that are on this earth for our bodies, and then people will say to me, well, Terry, will you put a diet together for me? And I say, no, because as soon as I tell you what I think you should eat, you're gonna tell me all things you don't like. Am I right? Okay, so, so I don't do it. I say, think about this, and this is what I want to share with you guys. If you took away the refrigerators, and you took away the grocery store, and you took away the restaurant, what are you going to eat? What are you going to eat? Grass. Grass. Okay, he's eating grass. <laughs> Which isn't necessarily a bad thing unless it's already been chemically treated. But if you think about that, and now you had to be the hunter-gatherer, you would understand what the body is supposed to run on. In other words, we eat in, in, the, in our country, and sorry to be around the world, a king's diet. You remember back in the day when they said the kings always got so fat and happy because they could afford to eat meat every single day. I mean, imagine Terry going out and pulling in um, anything I could get out of the ground, pluck it off a bush or a tree. If I could catch a rabbit or spear a fish, I'd have a feast. Do you think I would get one every day? Think about it, guys, okay? So we're not really supposed to be eating like that if we're using our logical mind. Can we all pretty much afford to eat like that? Yes, we can. Are we all suffering in one way or another because of our diet and our lifestyle? Absolutely. That's fact. I mean, we all know. Is there anybody here that doesn't believe that? Yay. Because they're my people. <laughs> okay. So everyone wants a magic bullet. Am I right? You know, like if the doctor would just give me something and I could leave and I feel great. And we do feel great for a while. But then we develop something else as a side effect. I mean, you guys watch TV. You hear the uh, pharma commercials, right? And it's like butterflies going around and you're, you're tiptoeing through the tulips, but you could end up with rectal bleeding and death, right? Okay, <laughs> so that's kind of, we want the magic bullet and I understand that, but the reality is we have to get control of our health. And when Mary was introducing me and she said, I got control of my health, I really did. Did I do it right away? Did I do it five minutes? No, it's been a journey. And it's been a journey of belief. Because in the beginning, when I was working on my respiratory, I don't know about you guys, how many people, <coughs> excuse me, read an article and about a nerve and you think, oh my gosh, I need that. 
it, it pertains to something you're feeling. And then you read another article and you go, holy cow, I need that too. And then you watch Dr. Oz, I'm gonna need that too. And soon you have an entire herbal medicine cabinet, but you don't even know what the heck you bought it for, and you're not motivated to really take it consistently, because you really, it sounded good, but a miracle didn't happen, so then you try something else. Is, is that fair that most people do that? Because I know, you know, you should have seen me back in the early days when I was a born again natural health person. Okay, so the truth is your choices matter. They really matter. And you can support your body and your body is designed by God to heal itself. Period. It is. I don't care what it is you're suffering from. I promise you. I've been there and done that. There isn't a story you could probably tell me that I couldn't top it. <laughs> anyway, okay, fresh air. Okay, fresh air is critical. We've got to get good, clean air in our bodies. That means we've got to get up off the couch, we've got to walk out the front door, and we've got to breathe, okay? Like, uh, I'm also a Tai Chi master trainer, Qigong, and, you know, pulling up and breathing, and we, we call it Okay, and smell the flowers. Okay, breathing, deep breathing, deep breathing, critical. How many people have taken any yoga classes? Yeah, they teach the deep breathing. There's a reason for it. In fact, I had an amazing yoga teacher years ago who, who trained over there with yogis and all kinds of people, and she was absolutely amazing. And she used to do a thing where you breathe through your nose 50 times rapidly. And she said it completely changes your blood. And now I know why it would completely change your blood. Because you're going to oxygenate your blood. See, you've got a pump in the center of your chest with 60,000 miles of veins and arteries and capillaries uh, it, that, that is taking that blood from your heart around your body 200 times a day at speeds of up to 10 miles an hour feeding every single cell in your body. And if you did this rapid breathing in and out, in and out, in and out 50 times, you're going to change the composition of that blood. How cool is that? And you'll notice it too if you don't think. Anyway, <laughs> fresh air, sunshine. How many people have heard we've all got to run out and buy vitamin D? Now here's my problem. I'm a master herbalist. I love herbs. Herbs are the leaves that, that, that are on the plant. The fruit for our food, the leaf for our medicine. I love herbs. But think about this. We all know where sun, where, what sunshine does for us, don't we? Does everybody know that's vitamin D? Okay. We got to get out in it. We don't need to bathe in the sun. We need to get out and breathe in the sun 10, 15 minutes a day. And how many people have heard of pulling your shoes off and stepping on this earth? How many people have heard of that? They call it something new now. I call it pull your shoes off and step on the earth. Uh, but it's called grounding now, to be cool. <laughs> every name of every possible thing changes, just so you know. So grounding would be because the negative charges from the earth will activate antioxidants in your body, who knew? But think about our shoes are all rubber sole. Anybody got pure leather soles anymore? No, they're all synthetic. So you're not getting these benefits. Pull your shoes off, walk on the ground. Not freshly sprayed grass, especially if it's wet. Don't do that. But even through concrete, you can stand barefooted, you can. And you can get amazing benefits from Diet is huge. How many people, raise your hand if you know what you should be eating. Everybody know what they should be eating? Anybody that doesn't know what they should eat? <laughs> right? Now here's the thing. How many people go, let's say, to a party or they're out with friends and there's a big cool dessert menu with lots of sugar in it and you turn to your friend Correct me if I'm wrong, and you go, I really shouldn't eat this. But I'm going to. Okay? I mean, we all do this stuff. We know what we need to do. I don't have to lecture you on that, but we'll get to some food anyway. 
exercise, oh my gosh. Who has a little voice that says, I really need to exercise? Does anybody have that voice? <laughs> and then if you don't stand up that second, another little voice says, I'll start tomorrow. <laughs> right? Okay? No, you have to stand up the minute you hear that voice. You don't have to leap in the air. You don't even have to go crazy with it. You just need to look at your watch or clock and walk out five minutes and walk back while breathing. That's what you have to do. Okay, why do you have to do that? Because our bodies have such a system which when we teach the body systems approach to natural healing, you'll be astounded with the information. Because when you understand that all of our 10 body systems have to be functioning, if one system goes down, guess what? It rolls in and affects the second system, which then rolls in and affects the third. And the next thing you know, you're a, a train wreck. Like I used to be with my traction and all my medications and blah, 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 okay? So exercise is critical. You have, how many people owned businesses? Anybody in the room owned a business? You did, I, I would know you did. Just by looking at you, that whole, I got it. No, not the belly. <laughs> you have to plan your days. You have to plan. See, if you just think, oh, tomorrow I'm going to exercise, but you get up, you get sidetracked, and 50 million things happen, and for a lot of us, ladies squirrel. <laughs> Somebody calls and says there's a sale, I'm in the car, you know, that kind of stuff. You have to make a plan for what your week or your day is going to be like when it comes to your health or you won't do it, just so you know, okay? Water, <laughs> how many people, you know, when they started the big water thing, and I thought, well, that's just so weird. Now we have to drink 64 ounces of water a day. I'm not even that kind of thirsty. Does everybody kind of feel that way, you know? Well, first of all, I suggest, God, I, do that again. <laughs> I suggest um, four ounces of water at a time. Like, if we're trying to drink our abundance of water, then we tend to guzzle 16 ounces as fast as we can to wrap that up, okay? But the kidneys really only hold four ounces. So if you make a big sipper, like I've always got one with me somewhere here. Oh, I think I left it back there. Sipper, handy. <laughs> I need water now, I'm kidding. Um, if you open it up and instead of stressing yourself out about all this water that you gotta put in your body, drink four ounces and put it back down. And then another moment it crosses your mind, drink four ounces. Now here's the deal. I was in a um, CEU class for naturopaths and uh, there was a gentleman teaching a class and he said to me the most profound thing that I never thought of and I'm just gonna share it with y'all. And that is that we have water sacks all over our body, our kidneys, our brain, our brain 70% water. So if we're not drinking water, and water does not mean tea, soda, 50 other things. Water means water, okay? Water is neutral on the pH scale. Our brain is 70% water. But he did an analogy where if you're not putting enough water in your body and your brain begins to dehydrate, it's gonna pull away from your skull. Ew, you know, I started thinking about that. <laughs> That's creepy. And that makes me drink water, okay? So keep that in mind, you know, your, your, your brain is pulling away from your skull, so that's disturbing. Fiber, you have to have fiber. Fiber cleans that 30 foot tube from, um, from your mouth to the exit point. Fiber is critical. Where do you get fiber? All kind of places. Your fresh fruits and vegetables are loaded with fiber. Uh, there's uh, things you can add if you're struggling with really cleaning this digestive tract. If you're doing a cleanse, you could use psyllium hull. Psyllium hull would be like scrub brushes, cleaning that digestive tract and getting you back to normal again in that area. Because in your digestive tract are two thirds of all your body parts, two thirds. So if you're a person who's suffering from constipation and or diarrhea, which is kind of the same thing, you need to get that figured out. You need to fix that. And fiber is gonna help you on both ends of that. Okay, one of the coolest things about herbs are that they normalize your body. You know, like if you had a thyroid issue and you took 
an herb for the thyroid, it doesn't matter if you're hyper or hypo because it's going to balance the thyroid. Does that make sense to everybody? Detoxification is what I'm talking about with the fiber. Okay, alkalinity versus acidity. How many people have heard about this, that if the body is too acidic, disease can grow. It only, it doesn't grow in an alkaline field. Has anybody heard of that? Yeah, okay. So what that means is we don't race out by alkaline water um, with a high pH because water is supposed to be, what did I say, neutral, okay? If you're familiar with the logarithmic scale, it is a scale that measures your acidity, your neutral, and your alkalinity. And so for each number on the scale, like seven is neutral. So eight is 10 times um, this, it, it would be 10 times stronger. Nine is gonna be multiplied by itself, it'll be 100 times stronger. 10 is gonna be 1,000 times stronger and so forth. Same thing going this way with acid, okay? So basically, if we think about what I was talking about, going out on the earth, finding your own food, 80, 85% of the food that you could gather to eat each day is going to be fruits and vegetables, period. Because then if you could catch the rabbit or spear the fish, and when it comes to the gluten issue and it comes to bread, guarantee you, if Terry Tomlinson had to go out and gather the wheat and grind the wheat and make the bread, there'd be no daggum bread in my house. Okay, period. So uh, with the breads, the problem with our gluten is, is, is literally that we have denatured that food. We've denatured the wheat, we've denatured, and a consequence is the gluten-free issue with, with really everybody. Just like we denature the milk from a cow by boiling it to death to where we have to add things back to it, enzymes, and so forth are what are missing, which is why everybody's lactose intolerant. And those that aren't noticing it, if you paid attention, you'll notice a lot in your digestive tract, a lot of issues that you're not relating to it. And if you're real noticeable, then you know you're lactose intolerant. But it's because we denatured the milk. Not that a cow's milk is really designed for our bodies, let's be clear. Um, you know, the cow nurses the baby and then weans it to grass. We nurse our baby and wean it to milk. Curious. Okay. So um, our bodies are amazing machines, have all kind of mechanisms in place to neutralize this acid. Okay, so if we are eating the standard American diet, if we're eating fast foods, if we're eating junk foods, or whatever you consider junk foods, in other words, if we are not eating 80% whole foods, fruits and vegetables are what I call whole foods, and then our nuts, seeds, grains, meat, big fat piece of chocolate cake. And believe me, I'm not a creepy natural health person. I'm not. I don't think everybody has to eat sticks and twigs. But if we're very cognitive, you can then go and have some of these things because you've built a strong enough fire in your gut to absolutely neutralize these problems. But our blood pH is slightly alkaline, about 7.4 and our body will fight to keep it going, to keep it absolutely normalized, hence the need for Whole Food, God's Pharmacy, to help our body in this endeavor. When we inundate our body with denatured foods, not only do we not even have enzymes to digest, how many people eat food and then feel like they blow up, they bloat? The reason is no enzymes. Now, you can go and get food enzymes and you can take them with the food you want to eat and it will help you digest it. But without the food enzymes, you feel that horrible bloated feeling, okay? That is because the food you're putting in your body is so denatured, there's no enzymes to naturally digest it, all right? Uh, so not only do we not have the enzymes necessary for digestion, but we position our body for the constant fight. Because for example, we eat food uh, uh, the body's creating through the digestive tract this chyme, okay? When it shoots up through the duodenum, which is part of the intestinal tract, if you don't have an alkaline field, guess what? Your body is gonna search itself for the alkalinity. If it goes into your bones and pulls the calcium, it's gonna leave you with osteoporosis. If it goes into your gallbladder, and pulls the alkalinity, it's gonna leave you with bile that turns to stones and now you have a bag of rocks. 
if you get into these conditions, it's because that body's too acidic. You need to stop and regroup and get that body in a more alkaline state. And that's not to say 100% alkaline. Body's not designed that way. It's to say 80-20 would be your diet goal. 80% whole food, meaning fill your plate with sweet potato, broccoli, I don't know, yellow squash, and then you can have a reasonable size, in my case, wild Alaskan salmon, something like that, uh, clean meat, uh, grass-fed beef, whatever, small size, because I guarantee you, you'll get full, your body will get in balance, but it ain't gonna happen the first time you do it. It just isn't, okay? So kind of keep that in mind. You have to, it's a journey back to wellness, but I promise you, every single person can get back to balance. They can, okay? Otherwise, your body is in a perpetual fight because your body is constantly trying to neutralize and balance the pH because your blood will remain at 7.4 no matter what because that's what your body is going to do, okay? Let's see. Get this thing going here. Oh, nope. Turn it around. Okay, so I'm going to tell you 15 of the highest alkaline foods and give you a little synopsis, okay? So cucumbers, number one, are high in um, alkalinity, uh, vegetable that regulate blood pressure, play a role in the structure of connective tissues within the body, including the muscles. Cucumbers also are mild diuretic and can ease bloating or swelling. Their antioxidant qualities make them great for removing toxins from the body. We're talking detox there. Cucumbers are also high in B vitamins. What do B vitamins do? Help keep that nervous system calm. Seeded watermelon. Guys, I used to, I've, I've been talking natural health for years and years and years, and uh, a product that I was in love with before, a product that I, uh, in the last six years, fell in love with, uh, literally had grapes, and I would say to people, how many people go to the store and you don't see grapes with seeds in them? And I think, how the heck do they grow them if there's no seeds? Who has the seeds, right? Well, watermelon's the same way, because guess what? How many people, you guys, I know all of you have had this experience, because back in the day, we had seeds in our watermelon. And you, you spit and spit and spit and spit, but you still bite into a seed. You chew and chew and you try not to get any of the pericard, but you still bite into it at some point, that little bit bitter. That's where the healing properties are. The seed is the life of the plant and it's the life in your body. And there's very few seeds that are not actually good for your body. But if you're ever eating seeds, like every single morning, I eat two ounces of raw pumpkin seed. First thing I do every morning, well, after a cup of hot milk water, but pumpkin seed. And, uh, but you chew and chew and chew, and I got little grandkids, and they're like, oh, Terry, can I have some seed? Only if I see you chewing it till it's liquid, because you don't have a grinder in your stomach. You don't want it to sit down in the diverticulum. You've got to chew that stuff. If you're buying whole grain breads and got all those cool seeds, make sure you're chewing it, okay? So seeded watermelon is an excellent alkaline forming food. The melon is high fiber, water content, which lets it flush acids out of the body. Incorporating seeded watermelon into the diet not only increases fiber intake, but also helps balance alkaline content. Watermelon is rich in vitamin C, beta carotene, and contains plenty of arginine and magnesium uh, and potassium, which helps reduce blood pressure. I love watermelon. You guys love watermelon? <laughs> Who knew it was gonna do all that, right? Avocado. In addition to balance and pH, this creamy fruit contains antioxidants that do wonders for the skin, okay? Essential antioxidants make avocados a powerful, nutrient-dense food. They're also high in monosaturated fats, which can help reduce cardiovascular disease and balance blood sugar and offer plenty of potassium, which reduces blood pressure. We get those little organic uh, guacamole that have garlic and tomato in little individuals so they don't turn black if you don't eat the whole thing. I mean to tell you, my husband and I eat those things like they're can. I mean, we really do. We love them so much, okay. But I didn't always love avocado, I'll be honest with you. That's, it's, it's the learned habit. <laughs> okay. Cayenne pepper. 
cayenne pepper, oh my gosh. Guys, you don't even know that cayenne pepper in the natural health world is like the king of herbs, okay? So one of the reasons is they talk about it uh, being able to stop a heart attack in action. And I will tell you, in my home, I have a cayenne tincture that is always there because I had that long history of heart problems. I never really have to worry with it, but if you're fasting, I always put cayenne in, in the, well, I do a lemon fast, so I always put cayenne in that as part of the formula. Another surprising high alkaline food is cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper is one of the most alkalizing foods filled with <coughs> antioxidants, anti-inflammatory benefits. This combination makes them handy for fighting off toxins. Cayenne aids in digestion, metabolic function, and has mood uh, boosting properties thanks to its ability to increase endorphins in the body. And I'll tell you a quick little funny story, my young son, because one of the things about cayenne is it'll stop bleeding in the body, and it will also, um, when, you, when, you, when cayenne opens up, you feel like you have indigestion, but if you know that it has numbing properties, okay, then um, if you wait just a few minutes and it's great for digestion, you roll with it. Always take it with food, though, if you're taking a capsule. So anyway, my son, <laughs> was young when I was really deep into this, and um, he's 39 years old, so I was teaching him all these things. So he knew about cayenne, stopping bleeding, and he, he goes sliding across the concrete from his bicycle, he's like 10 years old. He comes flying in the house, he's bleeding, he grabs the cayenne pepper and pours it on the wound. And then he's got his knee up, I can still see it with it in his face, going, I know it's gonna numb it, I know it's gonna burned the heck out of him. <laughs> but it did numb it and he survived. <laughs> okay, bell peppers. This is a controversial one. Bell peppers can enhance almost any meal, raw, grilled, or roasted. The veggie is packed with antioxidants that decrease the risk of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and inflammation. It's rich in vitamin C, vitamin A, and E, and fiber. Okay, some people have adverse <laughs> reactions to peppers due to the lectin. How many people listen to Dr. Bendry and all his lectins? Am I the only one? Okay, girl. Yeah, you do too? <laughs> I consider him, he's wonderful. He is a renowned cardiologist, amazing guy, but I consider him a, a born again natural health person. He's getting there uh, with his tomatoes and peppers. But anyway, um, what is his name? Dr. Gundry. Yeah, he's a renowned uh, cardiologist. He was involved in some of the first baby trans heart transplants. And, but he could keep himself and his wife well, and he is now a renegade natural health person. And, uh, and he's doing a great job. Some of the stuff uh, I can't say I disagree with, it's just not what I believe. Uh, but he'll, he's coming around, because he started out where you just, you can't eat tomatoes. And I thought, well, what about all the people in Italy, for Pete's sake? So I had to go research, because I never take anything in stock, and I went and researched it to find out, okay, wait a minute, is this like a man-made plant? Because we have a lot of that going on. But it was 450 BC, so no, it's been on the earth. So then I realized, and so now he's backtracking. Now you can peel it, take the seeds out. In the beginning, you couldn't eat them at all, but now you can eat them if you do that. But it's because of the lectins, but forget that tomatoes have lycopenes too, which is great for the heart. Okay. Okay, and so with peppers, it's kind of the same thing. Like a lot of times if a person is very, very inflamed and they're very reactive, then the nightshade vegetables are difficult for them, but only during the time they have this problem. As the body heals itself, they'd be able to resume eating their tomatoes and peppers and eggplant and that kind of stuff, okay? In my personal opinion of the subject. Okay, spinach. Easy to find and easier to use. This incredibly alkaline leafy green is high in vitamin K, A, C, as well as iron, potassium, magnesium. Spinach is also rich in chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is something we tell our grandkids all the time, you know, like, oh, you got stinky feet, you need to eat more green stuff. Spinach, get it, okay? Um, it's rich in chlorophyll, which can decrease inflammation, increase the quality of red blood cells, Adding spinach to meals will help ins uh, ensure balance in the body's mineral content. Minerals are so important. What about cooking spinach? 
Sir? What about cooking spinach? Cooking? There's a lot of recipes that say apply your spinach and cook it for three minutes or so. Yeah, well. Hey, it's coffee. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, sautéing spinach is great. I mean, I love it that way, too. We, we do it that way for a lot of things. Um, basically, when it comes to uh, the, the highest nutrient content, it would be closer to raw. In other words, after you cook it to 118 degrees, then you have destroyed a lot of the enzymes that make it digestible. So, but, but a quick sauté, soften it right down, a quick steam, um, as long as you don't get carried away. And then other than that, do what you want to do, but get your body because there's still other good, you know, properties to it, okay? Kale has a wealth of alkalizing benefits, including these um, now familiar essential antioxidants, which can improve the digestive system, help rid the body of acidity and toxins. Kale is one of the most nutrient-dense foods, high in vitamins A and C. It's also one of the best sources of vitamin K. Like if your skin is getting really thin and you bleed easily, vitamin K. In our family, if you do a high vitamin K, we also add uh, cayenne because it'll thin you out just a little bit so you get the balance. Because as such, it's not recommended for people taking blood thinners, as you know. If you're on a blood thinner, they tell you no vitamin K. So. But otherwise, you do more in your body. And once you get balanced, you're good. Bananas, this is really interesting. They act as a natural antacid, okay? Um, producing mucus that coats the lining of the stomach. It's a versatile fruit rich in calcium and can help balance blood sugar. Everybody screams how they're high glycemic, balanced blood sugar. How does that all go together? Uh, eating a banana before bedtime may improve sleep because they contain the amino acid uh, tryptophan. They also aid in relaxation thanks to muscle relaxing qualities of potassium and magnesium. So bananas are good food. Broccoli is an all around healthy vegetable. In particular, the cruciferous veggie is a must when it comes to increasing alkalinity. Broccoli helps inhibit the growth of cancer cells, supports the digestive system, improves detoxification process in the body, like many healthy vegetables, it contains antioxidants that can help decrease inflammation in the body. Also, broccoli is very high in um, glutathione, just so you know. You hear a lot about the broccoli <coughs> glutathione. Glutathione, yeah, high in glutathione. So is uh, asparagus and lots of other things. Celery, not only is celery alkaline, but it's also high in water, has lots of vitamin C which helps support the immune system, reduce inflammation, improve cardiovascular health. Potassium and sodium also help rid the body of excess fluid. Celery is also very high in fiber and can reduce constipation and aid in weight loss. See, a lot of times, especially with blood pressure, we're told not to eat salt, and rightly so, the commercial salt's a problem, but you have to have natural sodium. It's one of the backup groupies for your heart. Celery is the answer, and you'll find you get a lot of balance going because you need celery and carrot for your um, um, sodium potassium on the systolic side, and then calcium magnesium on the diastolic side, and that's the balance for your heart, okay? Okay, sea vegetables, you know, not. Okay. Sea vegetables are a mountain of alkalizing foods full of micronutrients, known for remarkable health benefits. The multiple varieties carry different nutritional profiles, but each type contains high levels of trace element iodine. Iodine, 100%, if that thyroid is on, start eating sea vegetables. I'm gonna tell you right now, you'll get yourself right out balanced. Uh, sea vegetables also yield a generous harvest of essential amino acids, critical for the body. Body doesn't make them, they're essential such as phenols and tannins. Despite their salty flavor, kelp, galoose, kombu, and other edible sea plants are rather low in sodium and calories. And quite frankly, uh, I've got a, a, a combination of, of that that absolutely helps the um, metabolism. Unbelievable if, uh, if that thyroid is off. Unbelievable combination, okay? and it's got the loose and uh, kelp and um, Irish moss in it. Very cool. 
All right, almonds. Almonds are more alkaline than other nuts, such as walnuts, pecans, cashews, according to the proponents of alkaline diets. Almonds also contain healthy omega-3 fatty acids that can help protect the heart. They're rich in protein, antioxidant, vitamin E, and minerals such as calcium, iron, magnesium, manganese. Clinical studies show that almond phytonutrients can reduce insulin resistance and systemic inflammation. The nuts biocompounds also help improve the blood lipid profile. Nuts are high in fiber uh, and contribute to feelings of fullness, making them tasty nutrient dense snack option for controlling the appetite and managing mm -hmm. weight. Okay? <coughs> and the reason is, is when you're trying to manage your weight, you've got to have some good protein that keeps you from being so hungry. Well, sea salt would be my go-to. Um, I would I would start developing a palate for just just yeah just the almonds in it. Yeah. After a while, you it, it's all about the palate. In our family, we had a rule that everybody in our family, everybody that sat at our table, had to take a tablespoon of no thank you. And the reason we did that was because I know if you take something enough, you develop a palate. All my kids developed into great. They eat everything everything and they always did and they're raising their kids the same way they just eat food because if you sat down at my table right now with my oldest daughter being 50 and 47 and my 39 year old son and and you refuse a plate at my table they will all chime in oh no no at mom's table everybody has to take a table and they will make the guests eat it they will it's so funny i'm always like okay copy out kill it Basil, this is interesting. Arom uh, aromatic basil can enhance the flavor and alkalinity of many dishes. Ayurvedic and other traditional medicine practices include this long revered, revered herb to relieve a host of gastrointestinal and kidney ailments. Uh, eugenol and, uh, and other biocompounds are thought to help reduce blood glucose levels, fight inflammation, boost immunity, treat mood and cognitive conditions as well. We got two more of these guys. Root vegetables can make uh, hearty alkalizing additions to diet. Radishes and beets carry nitrates that increase nitric uh, oxide, a molecule uh, integral to many cardiovascular functions. Can you see, guys, what's in the pharmacy that's right on this earth? Can you see what I'm talking about? Once you really begin to understand what food does for your body, you understand why Hippocrates said, let food be your medicine, period, okay? Um, a form of vitamin A that helps protect vision, enhance skin, fight cancer-causing compounds. Root vegetables supply plenty of soluble and insoluble fiber, which can boost the health of gut microbia. And you know what's interesting is, every now and then, and very frequently, we start getting this whole campaign against something. We have the campaign against AIDS, you know? Right? And you couldn't eat an egg for fear you're gonna, you know, have to be on a statin. I mean, all these campaigns, there's a campaign out against potatoes now. I'm like, really? What? You know, like, really? It just, it, it, it's exhausting to live in this world and listen to this stuff. Yes? Carrie, what's next to, are those peanuts in the front? It does look like peanuts, yes. <laughs> Although, yeah, it looks like peanuts too. Yeah. yeah. Maybe they grew under the earth, you know. Okay. Well, maybe they have roots. <laughs> Do they? Yes. Okay, then that's what it is. So, interesting what food does. Citrus fruits, this will surprise you, okay? Uh, because citrus fruits, like, we're big fans of citrus uh, because all through the years I learned that it, it creates an alkaline ash in the body. And it's so funny, if, if one person write something on Google that, you know, that's stupid and it doesn't work that way, and somebody thinks it sounds good and they copy it and they post it, next thing you know, it sounds like it's true and it's not. Citrus is good for you. Uh, high in citric and ascorbic acid, yes. Although they're acidic, these fruits generate alkaline byproducts and fans of alkaline diets suggest they're alkaline. When I tell you uh, for, I don't even know how many years now, probably 30 years, I don't ever eat a meal without a cup of warm lemon water, period. I don't care where I am. Anybody that knows me, 
knows that that's what I always have with every single meal. Two reasons. I learned years ago, just the thought of things that might have fat in it then coagulating through the digestive tract, you know, we harden it back up and keeping the warm um, water flowing. That's one reason. And the second is to continually keep the body in an alkaline state, okay? Lemons, oranges, limes, grapefruit, tangerines are a rich source of vitamin C and supply generous amounts of vitamin A, potassium, magnesium, folate. They also contain flavonoids that might help fight neurodegenerative conditions, diabetes, um, arthrosclerosis, and cancer. Okay, so the human genome product. Now, I could have gone on and I can go on and on and on about inflammation and how to feed the body and so forth, but I thought I'd throw this in there for you guys to know about in case you don't know. The Human Genome Project was an international scientific research product with the goal, and it was, it was all countries involved, of determining the base pairs that make up the human DNA and identifying, mapping, and sequencing all the genes of the human genome with both a physical and functional standpoint. It remains the world's largest collaborative biological project. The project began in 1990 and took 13 years to complete. So the reason I tell you about that is because my personal love is nutrigenomics. It's a scientific study of the interaction of nutrition, natural compounds, and your genes, especially with regard to preventing or treat, treatment of disease. And so activation versus supplements. See, I was so passionate about a particular product that I became the number one distributor in the world of that product. Because back in the day, it delivered 2,500 units of antioxidants to the body. And that was a big deal. And it was high in every possible assay. And so um, I, I, 20 years, love, love, love this product until six years ago. Six years ago, I was introduced to activation. Activation is based on this genome project, like turning the body's survival genes back on, okay? So instead of that whole bowl of herbs, constantly trying to supplement the body, instead turn the body back on. So um, since learning that activating the body uh, to do what it should be doing, I become a huge fan of nutrigenomics. The results for myself and my family have been phenomenal. I represent three activators with huge peer-reviewed published science patents uh, to turn the pathways on and communicate with your cells. The product's name is ProTandem. NRF2 is a pathway to your cell. Every cell in your body turns the antioxidants back on like when you were a little child. Now your body's producing a million antioxidants every second of the day. So I was over here in my mind with a Dixie cup of water throwing it on a house fire once I learned that we could turn the body back on and produce a million antioxidants every second of the day. NRF1 is a pathway to every cell in your body um, to uh, encourage the nucleus to start producing mitochondria. Mitochondria is the energy storehouse of every cell in your body. You raise the energy in the cell, you stop the free radical damage, and if that immune system is up and running, your microbiome, boom, your body can cleanse and heal itself. And then ultimately, the third activator is called NAD. Now, you may have heard of that recently because everybody's talking about NAD. And NAD, people go and pay a thousand bucks for an infusion, which washes out the body quickly. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, an NAD supplement will increase sirtuins by 2%. Sirtuins are a family of proteins in every cell in your body. And what they do is called autophagy. Autophagy means they pressure wash the cell. All the little chips of free radical damage, all of the dead floating mitochondria, all of the fog within the cell gets washed out. And actually, in layman's terms, it's almost like putting it through a disposal grinding it and making those um, nutrients uh, reusable to fill new cells. So that's what autophagy is. This will increase, increase that activity by 100% 24 hours. So this is what I'm in love with. I'm happy to answer any question anybody has. Thanks for your time. And that's the end of my story. <laughs> I'm sticking to it. Oh.
my, my thing here. Do have any questions for Jerry? My question for Terry is, um, if I eat grapefruit, oranges, I don't eat that many lemons, um, but anything in the orange, tangerine, clementine, under my ring, under my watch, around my neck, I will turn green. Okay, you said your skin hurts. Well, Every single day, and then we have a nootropic drink 
that is brain food with no sugar, um, has the same NERC2 technology through the products, because this company isn't a supplement company. They are about activating the body, and there's huge science. Yes, ma'am. Uh, how is the product distributed? I'm a distributor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was in health food stores uh, for the first uh, eight, nine years, but you would never know what's in the bottle. And so then they took it through the network in order to get it out where people know what it is and what it does. So, yeah. What other questions? Yes, ma'am. So, how do we find out more about how you can get this? Oh, okay. Well, you, you can, um, I'll find a piece of paper. You guys can give me your number. I can send you a video. You can watch it. And then you can go to the website and read the information. There's tons of information, so much information all over YouTube, it's all over everywhere. I'm on an email feed with more than 2,000 doctors um, and medical professionals nationwide that once they see the science, exactly what you're you know, asking about, they use it and recommend it in their practices. So, what else do we have? Yes, ma'am. She's looking for them. So let's give Terry a big round of applause. That was an amazing uh, information that we all need in our lives. Um, just a couple of points that Terry mentioned. One was Google and how you know somebody doesn't like something and then they go on or they like something but it's really not good for you and they tell you that it is that kind of thing. There's another site out there that's called Salt Scholar google.com which you can get more accurate information on so that might be a place to look at more information in scholar.google.com um, it's yes superoxide dismutase in the body, okay? But if you took this one tablet, it's gonna increase 30%. Glutathione is gonna increase 300%. And catalase, which is another enzyme that works in tandem with superoxide dismutase, <coughs> is increased 54%. So my mind says, the reason I would continue to take it forever is because I already know you don't have superoxide dismutase in your body. And these two, as a catalyst, create this million antioxidants that, that activate it so that your body's now producing it. So you don't have to, in other words, if you think about antioxidants, high uh, blueberries, and some of the things that I was talking about, the high antioxidant foods, 
Okay, you could not eat enough blueberries on this planet to have your body produce a million antioxidants like when you were a small child. And there was an ABC primetime video with John Keonis. Uh, it was an investigative report to try to debunk it, okay? And then what happened was the guy's still taking it. If you go research him, you're gonna see the evolution from where he was and where he is today, okay? That's one thing. Was Mar debunking the blueberries or debunking the- Debunking this product. He, he was an investigative report. Okay. I mean, it, right. it's never meant to have a good outcome, <laughs> you know, when they do that. Uh, so that was that. But then it created this barrage of institutions that we all know. Washington State University says it's the most extraordinary therapeutic and preventative breakthrough in the history of medicine. National Institute on Health did a 10 year, $10 million study looking for natural compounds that would extend life. The only product they found increased lifespan by 7%. I mean, there's amazing information that you can find on it. So, I, I won't be late in this talk. Okay. I have to, you know, I have to go off and read it, but is, you know, when you talk about 20 year olds, and then you talk about, I mean, not to offend anybody, but I'm gonna assume everybody in this room is at least in their 60s and maybe in their okay. 50s. I'm um, 73. Well, I'm 72, so I'm going to say that. But I guess, you know, what's the, um, let's see, uh, the percentage of, um, so you look at a 20 year old, they take this product, okay, and they increase whatever, you know, by, we'll just, I'm making stuff up, 50%. Okay, if, you, if you're then taking, if you start taking it in your 70s and 50s, like, are you, do you have that same opportunity to increase yes. that? I'll just call it wellness. Okay. And that, or is it diminished at, you know, with each decade? Okay. So what happens is, uh, it's yeah. science. Yeah. She's, she's trying to determine if you start taking it later, will you have the same effects as if you're taking it young? And so the science shows that it will uh, uh, decrease oxidative stress by 40% in one month. Okay, regardless of your age. Regardless of your age. And the rule of thumb is one month for every decade of life. So like in my case, when I started taking it, I was 60-ish, uh, six years ago, 60 something. Uh, and mine is from 73. <laughs> was six. six from 73, how old was I before? I don't know. Anyway, I was that age. So, and it was interesting because at about the six month uh, piece because I didn't feel like I, I was taking it because of science. Like in natural health, you don't have it. You have historical uses for herbs, but you don't have science like this. And so I immediately started taking it because I understand science and read the reviews and stuff. So anyway, um, at about the six month uh, area, I did begin to notice stuff. And then fast forward, it's only been probably going on three years now that I discovered I could do 40 jumping jacks off the ground. And I'll be honest with you, think about this. Two broken backs, a chip in my neck bone, an injured sciatica, a run by a car, nerve damage, bulging disc. Who would even think of doing jumping jacks? But I got one of those little things, those little 10 minute thing, like exercises. And the first thing on it was 40 jumping jacks. I'm like, what the heck, are you kidding me? And then I thought, I wonder if I could do one. And I did it. And then I did another. And now it's my claim to fame to be 73 with that history to do 40 jumping jacks. Exciting. What kind of benefits, if any, would you see in your blood work, uh, you know, your uh, testing? Of yeah. Why did we you mean on, on this particular it? product? Yes. Okay. So which, what would it change? Well, let me just tell you. Just April, okay. You know, else April, yeah. Well, and first of all, I never get that done. Okay. Like, I never go to the doctor on purpose since my son was born. He's 39. Okay. But I can tell you, I have <coughs> a guy who has a kidney transplant. He wanted to take the trisynergine to really bad. And we were moved right along with the conversation. And then he tells me he has a transplant. I said, listen, I've been to every doctor meeting. The only counter indication is obviously you don't want to boost your body if you're because of an organ transplant, you don't want to reject it. I said, so you can't take it. He goes, but I want to take it. I don't care what you want, you can't. Okay. So about eight months later, his name comes through as a purchase. So I called him, his name is Kevin. I go, Kevin, hey, it's Terry. Listen, did you order try synergize? He goes, yes, I did. And I said, oh, is it for your fiance? And he goes, no, it's for me. And I go, Kevin, I told you, you can't take it. 
And he goes, well, I'm working with my transplant team and they're gonna monitor me because I wanna take it. And I'm like, okay, then you have to text me. Terry Tomlinson said, I cannot take this product. I go, because, you know, like if something goes wrong, I, I, I can't even be attached to it. I was so upset over it. Eight months later, after that, he had blood work normal. Like his transplant team about jumping out of their skin. Everybody's super excited, okay? So is it the same results for everybody? Because here's the deal is you never know what people are doing themselves, you know what I mean? But there are amazing stories all over YouTube. I've got a, um, if you friend me on Facebook, I have a, um, a piece that is called Biohackers Club. And I post everybody's testimonies there with their pictures. And you can go in and read all kinds of stuff. Okay, does that help you? And if you want to friend me on Facebook, it's Terry Freeman Tomlinson. Terry with one R. T E R I. Terry Freeman Tomlinson. All right, chicken noodle soups. Anybody got anything else? If you friend me, then I'll find you. Okay. And it's on Facebook, so if you guys are on Facebook, then you know, you'll be able to see all the stuff. Just thank you so much, Terry, for this evening, and thank you all for coming.